Okay, so let's go to spelling correction now. In the last uh, 10 minutes or so. Now, spelling correction can be used in two principal ways. Could you switch off the microphone, please? Spelling correction could be used to correct the documents that are being indexed. Uh, I hope you are be able to keep track of the flow. Right now we, we are moving to a different topic which is spell correction. Soundex was a different topic and wildcard queries was a different topic. Right, But all three of them have something in common which is that the query that we are, we are, we are looking for retrieval that is fuzzy or tolerant to variations in spelling. Okay, whether it's spelling correction or whether it's wildcard queries or whether it's soundex, uh, the retrieval needs to approximately match the query. Uh, but the matching could be, you know, a wildcard match or a soundex match or a spelling uh, variant. So spelling correction can be done on documents that are being indexed. And it can be done on correcting queries that are misspelled. Right? If, you, if you don't type in a query with the right spelling, you may not be able to get the right answers to the query. That's the reason for trying to correct spellings in the queries. Correcting documents that are being indexed, um, why is that helpful? Well, because if the documents contain spelling mistakes, then it's possible that queries on the right spellings may not retrieve those documents. So that's one incentive to have the right spellings in all the documents that are being indexed. But what we're going to do is we're going to focus mainly on correcting user queries to retrieve the right answer. So we'll be working, we'll be looking at spelling correction mainly in the context of misspelled queries because you know, uh, trying to interfere with what documents already exist out there, th that's something which, you know, a lot of people have felt sh is, is not the right approach because you don't want to modify the documents that people have written out there just because you think that the spelling was not right. It may be, maybe the spelling mistakes were deliberate in some cases or maybe the language is different in some cases. If you're not able to detect a language properly, you'll be, you know, if you apply a, an English spell character on it, uh, you'll end up with totally different words. Furthermore, spelling correction is of, can happen at two levels. You could either treat every word that you're looking at as independent of other words. Right? You could, if, if, if an individual word is misspelled, you could try to correct its spelling without keeping in mind the context in which that word appears in the sentence. Okay, just, so just treat a word as if it's an isolated word and correct its spelling if it's misspelled. Now if you do that, then you're not going to catch typing errors of the form from misspelled as form. Right? If you're typing the word FROM on a keyboard, you could accidentally type O first and R after that and you'll get form. So this is a misspelled version of from. But in isolated word correction, you won't detect this spelling mistake because both these words are have the right spelling. But you could also try context sensitive spelling correction where it's not sufficient for the word to be just spelled correctly. But it should also match the grammatical context. If, for example, if you look at a sentence like this, I flew from Heathrow to Narita and instead of from, I, uh, you know, somebody spelled, uh, spelled it as F-O-R-M. If you are doing context sensitive spelling correction, you can actually detect this as a spelling error, even though as an isolated word, it, it is a meaningful word. Okay, so we're going to look at both isolated word spelling correction and context sensitive spelling correction, both. A few words though before uh, we look at uh, spelling correction in more detail, I mentioned that we are not often going to correct the documents that are being indexed. 
there are certain circumstances where you may want to correct the documents that are being indexed. For example, I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, the Digital Library of India. Uh, this is a Digital Library website. Oops, sorry, I dropped my mouse. So it's a digital library website which has scanned copies of which has scanned copies of many of the old texts that were published um, you know more than a century ago and which are out of print right it's hosted by the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore and uh, you know you could search for uh, let's see uh, so let me search for an author called Madhavananda who's, you know, uh, I was reading some of his books. So I'll, I'll get a set of results corresponding to books authored by this author. But those books are actually not uh, in text format. They're actually in, um, you know something called uh, TIF format which is a scanned format okay it's an opti optical uh, okay it's not opening here but it's, it's it's a scanned book it's not a book that is converted into text so when we have these optical optically scanned documents and when we want, if we want to index them, it turns out that this Digital Library of India website doesn't index the text in these documents. So, I mean, if you want to, I don't know if they take students, but this is something you could try, uh, you know, as a project, if you're interested in continuing IR, you could try to improve their uh, retrieval system over here, because right now it's pretty simplistic. Their queries don't work properly unless you have exact matches, and their documents are not converted into uh, text form, even the English ones. But in the process of converting scanned documents into text, there could be correction algorithms that are needed. For example, if the letter R and N appear right next to one another in a scanned document, it's possible that converting it into text form may introduce a spelling error where R N may get replaced with M because, you know, from a distance, in a scanned document, this may sound like the letter M. This may look like the letter M. Then other characters like O and D may get confused with one another more, uh, uh, more you know, pretty often in, in any kind of optical character recognition. Whereas O would not get confused with I. Okay, so domain specific knowledge may also help. Which letters are likely to get confused with which other letters that's something that's some kind of knowledge you can use in order to uh, hone your spell character while typing on a qwerty keyboard for example you're more likely to misspell words by typing a character that is adjacent to the character you should actually type okay, so uh, on the keyboard the letter o is present right next to the letter i Right. So I am likely to misspell O as I because my finger may accidentally hit I. But in an optically, in, in optical character recognition, O is more likely to get confused with D. Right. But D is pretty far on the keyboard from O. So again, you know, depending on, uh, you know, whether the documents are typed or whether they are scanned, uh, you know, different letters are likely to get confused with other letters. Now, as I said, uh, web pages may also have typos. Printed material, even printed material that has been proofread can have typos. You know, books have typos, for example, uh, even books that are published today. So what we will do is, we will assume that um, what we'll try to do is we will try to ensure that the dictionary contains as few misspellings as possible right and one way to do that is to say well let I'm going to ensure that my dictionary only contains valid words in the English language 
of course that's not that doesn't make sense uh, uh, because if you have proper names for example they won't be present in the dictionary but you want to minimize the number of misspellings in your dictionary if you, if you want to do something like this the dictionary of your index that is but as I said we won't for this course because we are dealing mainly in, with the web context we won't think of changing the documents instead we will think of correcting the spelling errors in the query okay so we'll try to fix how queries get mapped to documents instead of trying to change the documents themselves